Diagnoses of mental disorders in children and adolescents are increasing at an alarming rate, especially in the USA, where the number of manic depressive children has gone up by 4,000% over the past 10 years. The most widely used treatments are psychotropic drugs. I take this. It's Respidol. The early diagnoses of manic depressive disorders in children in the USA can be traced to a team of doctors in Boston. They've been the subject of strong criticism for years, particularly from Europe. But the number of psychotropic drug prescriptions for children has also increased worldwide by 250% over the last decade. taking a lot of them for so long I really don't know how it's helping because I don't really it was yeah. I don't really remember Anna nine and will six diagnoses bipolar disorder I couldn't jump put on the headband too <laughs> put on the headband don't worry will this is not showing showing in America like their father siblings Anna and will both suffer from bipolar disorder another term for manic depression. Their mood swings are often unpredictable and enormously challenging for those around them in everyday life. Um, with Anna, my oldest, um, with Anna we sort of knew something was different right from the beginning. Um, in fact, we often laugh now about even before she was born, I was getting ultrasounds every day, and the nurse kept saying to me, your child never sleeps. They're supposed to be awake 20 minutes and then sleep 20 minutes, and yours is never asleep. Um, and then when she was born, she was very alert right away, just like staring at us and very, um, just much more alert than a newborn. Anna attends a normal school though since the age of three, she's received a variety of diagnoses from a number of different doctors. It was only when her mother heard about the Boston medical team through a TV advert that the family became convinced that Anna and her brother were bipolar. Why, yes, please. I talked to Dr. Joshi. I'm going to sleep with anything? Uh-huh. Yes. He called it in to the pharmacy. Okay. Okay, that's good. You seem like you were feeling better by the time you left this morning. Yeah. I think that's a new one I'll help. This tiniest thing would set off, you know, a two-hour rage or crying fit. Um, she might start saying things that seem like someone says when they're depressed. Um, for instance, she, you know, one day, one week would be drawing butterflies and flowers and rainbows and all sorts of that things like that, you know, happy, and then. The next week, she would take a black crayon and scribble all on the, all she would draw is black, you know, scribbles, and rip the paper through, you know, to the table. Um, and she would say just things like, I don't want to be alive anymore. Um, like, I feel very sad, and I feel mad, and Dr. Yoshi knows what medicine to do, and I feel like that, so that's really good, and, um, and also, but sometimes um, when we go, um, I don't feel, I feel really hyper, but I get hyper at doctor's offices for some reason. But not as hyper as I used to get, because then I didn't, then it was uncontrollable, but now I just get really silly. Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston specializes in the treatment of bipolar disorder in children. Their team of doctors has been doing research in this area for many years. 
if you have a manic upswing like this, and I wish I had a board, a downswing like a depression, and there's a euthymia in between, and if it's like the two ends of a piano accordion and you crunch it, so what you see is that the mania and the depression overlap, which we call as the mixed state, in which you may have lots of energy, you have racing thoughts, you, you feel very adamant, grandiose, rigid, but at the same time you feel dysphoric, you, are, you, you easily turn into tears, you don't like yourself and have um, extreme episodes of not feeling well, all of this happening at the same time. Our brains consist of a hundred billion nerve cells which communicate with each other permanently through chemical messengers called neurotransmitters. The transmission of information influences our body's functions, such as our thoughts, feelings and actions. If this complex system is thrown out of kilter, we can become very ill. The more transmitters that are available, the more energy a person has. However, with too many transmitters, a person can become manic. Often the system is upset and a deficit of transmitters occurs, resulting in a depressive phase. Voices in my brain. It used to happen in 2007 and 2006 and 2008. It started like 2007, but now it's not going that often. When it started, it was getting worse because it told me that, oh, I hate your mom and stuff. And my brain like tells me that, and I say, stop it, brain. And my dad prays for me, and sometimes that helps when he prays for me. Jaylene has been thought to have had bipolar disorder since she was three years old. She's an especially difficult case, and the manic aspects of her illness are particularly evident. Like Anna and Will, Jaylene is a patient at Massachusetts General Hospital, where the child psychiatry medical team has known her for several years. Whoa, How are things going? Good. Looking back, she was the most classic uh, bipolar kid, you know, with these full-blown manic giddy, laughing, out of control, uh, unable to be redirected children I've ever seen. In Europe, different medical terms are applied to psychiatric irregularities in children, and the bipolar diagnosis is not often used. Child and adolescent psychiatrist, Dr. Martin Holtman, examined all the patients in his former Frankfurt clinic against the American Diagnosis Questionnaire. The result was that the bipolar profile fitted a mere 7% of his patients. Es gibt ja gute Beschreibungen von den amerikanischen Kollegen. Wie sind diese Kinder? Wie alt sind die? Ähm, was haben die Eltern für Störungen? Was haben die Kinder für Symptome eigentlich? Wie entwickelt sich das? Die haben das ja sehr gut beschrieben. Und wir finden diese Kinder bei uns auch. Also wenn man die amerikanische Literatur liest, und blendet man das Wort bipolar aus und nimmt das einfach nur als Verhaltensbeschreibung, dann finden wir dieselben Kinder bei uns auch. Aber eben nicht unter bipolar, sondern unter anderen Diagnosen. Ja. Mark andre five, diagnosis, ADHD. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is currently the most frequent mental illness in children. Eight times as many boys as girls are afflicted by this condition. Just like his little brother, Marc Andre has always had more difficulty with concentration than other children his age. Dieses hyperaktive, dieses unkonzentriert sein, diese Unruhe, die man, die, die, die er dann ausstrahlt, nicht bei der Sache sein, 20 Sachen gleichzeitig anfangen oder eins nach dem anderen nichts fertig machen können, das sind so die Symptome und das, was er bei ihm halt dann hervorsticht, ne? also was man bei ihm dann besonders merkt. As early as 1844, the pediatrician Heinrich Hoffmann, in his reports on children he called Hans Head in the Clouds, 
and Fidgety Philip described a typically inattentive and hyperactive ADHD child of today. But famous personalities like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart are also supposed to have suffered from ADHD. And we know that Kurt Cobain was treated with methylphenaldate for his hyperactivity as a child. People with ADHD appear to have a deficiency of certain neurotransmitters. Methylphenidate is a substance which intervenes in the transmission of nerve cell signals in the brain and raises the transmission concentration. In Frankfurt leben ja viele Amerikaner, ne? dadurch, dass wir ein großes Generalkonsulat haben und ein Teil der Kinder wird hier behandelt unter zum Beispiel der Diagnose ADHS. Und die Kinder kommen hierher, durchaus mit einem schweren ADHS und werden hier eingestellt mit Psychostimulantien, also Methylphenidat ist die Substanz. Und dann fahren sie in den Ferien in die USA nach Boston und kommen wieder und in der ersten Sprechstunde sagen sie uns, ich habe noch zwei Medikamente dazu gekriegt von meinem Doktor im Urlaub. Und dann fragen wir, warum? Ja, der hat gesagt, ich bin bipolar. This is William's oh. honey. In that case. And this is Anna's. Other one. Will! What? Come take your medicine, honey. I can use this bow and arrow if I have to. That is way you too can, much. You can use the bow and arrow if you have to. To what? Ow! 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 Over here, please. Aww. Take your medicine. Like approximately six million other American children, Anna and Will take psychotropic drugs every day. For the past six months, Anna's been taking a new medication, Abilify, which should help suppress her manic side. Will has been taking Seroquel for a year. Or have it now. It's very, um, like, it's kind of sour, almost, but not really. It's like sweet and sour, but then it doesn't always taste very good. It tastes bad, bad, bad. Risperdal holds me up because it calms me down. If I don't take Risperdal, I get hyper. Hyper means when I act too silly. Mental illnesses are ancient, but their treatment with psychotropic drugs is relatively new. They've replaced sedative herbal remedies and opium. Chlorpromazine was discovered by accident in 1950. It was the first medication that freed many patients from hallucinations and illusions. Lithium was developed from it and helped the mentally ill for a long time. But because of the severe side effects, new medications such as Risperdal have been invented. And we have found that there are certain medicines that work quite well with this disorder. Now, every medicine we give will have side effects, so it's a balancing act that we always have to work with. But uh, I see quite remarkable improvement with the medication part, which is what I focus on. All right. Or, well, the one like I talked about with her. Or I'll drive you early in the morning and be I want to drive early in the morning. Okay. Gabby, forget this all like every day. It stays in for recess every day. Maybe. It's never totally clear which medication will have a positive effect on an individual child. Since Anna's been taking Abilify, she's become depressive with severe mood swings. Well, Dr. Joe, she said perhaps what's happened is that it's it's gotten rid of the mania, the manic side of things, so the depression's kind of come out more. Um, and that may be the case. To us, it feels like she's more depressed most of the time now. Um, and I called him this morning because she's really been not doing well the last um, couple of weeks. And uh, we were supposed to see him next week, but based on how she was this morning and last night, I um, didn't think we should wait a week. Many psychotropic drugs are not approved for children. The exceptions are Ritalin and antidepressants given from the age of six. But doctors can justify prescribing other medications earlier as individual healing attempts. This is a regular occurrence in the USA, which accounts for the majority of the 17 million children taking psychotropic drugs worldwide. 
Wir sind insgesamt, denke ich, etwas zurückhaltender bei der Medikation. Also wir verschreiben nicht so schnell Medikamente. Wir dosieren auch vielleicht in vielen Fällen nicht so hoch. Und wir kombinieren nicht so viel. Die Amerikaner haben fast nie eine Monotherapie, sprich nur ein Medikament, sondern die Kinder kriegen oft zwei, drei Medikamente. Ein bisschen abwerten könnte man sagen, kriegen einen ganzen Cocktail. Und da sind wir vorsichtig. Ne? Lass dich fallen. Alle da. fallen. Alle ja, da. Auf, den Rücken. auf den Rücken. Fallen. Einfach fallen. Ja. Ja. Nein, ja. wir fallen ja. nicht auf, Schatz. Komm her, Papa fängt ja. nicht auf. Ja. Komm, lass Papa ist da. Papa, Papa ist, ist hier. Ja. Komm, also. lass dich fallen. Ja, komm. Papa kriegt meinen Kopf. Wow. Ja. 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 Das Vertrauen, was wir so schnell ja. gefasst haben. Mhm. Gerade auf der Leiter rum und dann die Höhe zu überwinden und dann noch den Mut zu haben, sich einfach rückwärts fallen zu lassen. Ja. Ja, war schon erstaunlich. Sie haben Vertrauen zu Ihnen gehabt, weil wir haben Ihnen schon in den Vorübungen dieses Vertrauen gegeben. Mark Andre is with his father at a rehab center that specializes in treating children with attention deficit disorders. Here they meet other families who try to help their children with alternative methods. Traditional values like trust and the strengthening of the parent-child relationship are at the forefront of the therapy. Und noch mal hoch. Komm. Ja, ich denke, mal ein generelles Rezept kann man das nicht nennen, aber äh, man versucht so viel wie möglich, was man hier mitbekommen hat, äh, in den Alltag zu integrieren. Es wird nicht immer leicht sein, das ist klar. Äh, aber natürlich, man muss gucken, schon alleine, was er für sich mitgenommen hat und was er alleine für sich umsetzen möchte in seinem jungen Alter. Und natürlich, inwieweit ich ihn oder wir ihn in diese Richtung steuern können. Jetzt schaue ich ihm in die Augen und dann fragst du ihn, Stevie, vertraust du mir? Vertraust du mir? Dann guckt er mich jetzt an. Er guckt dich an. Und was bedeutet das? Dass er mich liebt. Und den Zehen halten. Ja? Meinst du, er hat's gut gemacht, darfst du ihn loben? Das hast du gut gemacht. Using psychotropic drugs to treat children is a very recent science that has only been developed in the USA over the past 15 years. But children respond to medical intervention more sensitively than adults. Their brains are still developing so the direct side effects are much stronger. With the extraordinary rise of bipolar diagnosis in American children, the demand for new medications has also increased. Modern antipsychotics are often applied. These medicines affect the brain metabolism and are usually used in the treatment of schizophrenia. When we are putting these kids on these medications, um, there's an anticipation that the treatment may go on for, for years uh, to come, and they have uh, long-term side effects like lithium has, effect on thyroid, on kidney clearance. So we are concerned about those side effects. Um, in general, pediatric bipolar disorder is far more difficult to treat than the adult onset bipolar disorder. So the treatment is rocky. The Department of Radiology at McLean Hospital in Boston is part of the research unit of the General Hospital. A close collaboration is supposed to guarantee the improvement in pharmaceuticals for bipolar children. We found that in kids who are bipolar kids who are treated with lithium, that the amount of lithium that got into their brain was lower than what was in their serum than what you find for adults. I think what I would really like to find out is if, um, you know, can we predict, you know, treatment response in kids based on what we measure in the spectroscopy? And also because a lot of medications that are currently being used in kids are medications that have been tried and tested in adults, but they haven't necessarily been tested on kids. And can we get information that maybe we can come up with some other medications that aren't, you know, as harsh, you know, as some of the, the medications. They're effective, but they have a lot of side effects. Especially pronounced in children, the ingestion of certain psychotropic drugs can lead to weight gain and growth dysfunction. Nervousness, sleeplessness, cardiovascular diseases and mood swings can also develop. In the long term, 
the risk of developing diabetes increases, along with strain on the kidneys and thyroid. I did it from when I was a baby. We rock, we rock, God. God as you rock, no superstar. We're all getting you, I'm getting in there. You can be laughing, running to the alpha me. I'll take fast, you rock and rock. I would say about six, she started with the anxiety. So I mentioned that to him and he said, well, let's give her um, an anti-anxiety medication. So at that point he gave her lorazidam, lorazepine to um, calm her down. That didn't do anything, it just made her more hyper. It just made her more stimulated. So he said, well, let's try, let's try Klonopin. We tried that, didn't help her. Nothing would help. So at that point, we went back and back and forth. He just kept, you know, mixing the medication like the Risperol. That was the only thing that really helped her. So he just kept upping the dose, upping the dose, splitting the doses up to see if that would help. Well, we've tried a lot with Jaylene. And uh, more recently, I even uh, embarked on a, a trial of lithium. I tried to avoid that because it hasn't shown good benefit in small kids, and then there's a risk for uh, kidney failure with it. So, but given that she was so difficult, we tried a small, very small dose of that, and it just didn't work out. She started to get confused. She was slowed down a lot with it, but, you know, she couldn't think clearly, so we, we abandoned that. The psychiatrist, Dr. Dominic Riccio, is one of the biggest critics of the administration of medication to children in the USA. In fact, when you give a psych antipsychotic drug to anyone, including especially children, you are causing an imbalance. It's an exogenous substance that you're putting into the brain, and you're causing a, a purposeful imbalance. So, and you're doing very damaging things, in my opinion, to the child because you're shutting down the centers of the brain that are responsible for creativity, for loving, for emotion, for feeling the very things that make us human beings and discriminate us from the animals. Raul, 11, diagnosis, ADHD and bipolar disorder. There you go. I'm here. Raul, too, already has a very long medical history. Come here, girl. Hey. This is Simone. How about you? No, it's the how do you? This way. This is Simone, who's um, very um, funny, who is now paying attention to me, right? He started on Boost Bar. That was the first. That was the, the first. The most mild uh, inoculants. And then, they, then we tried soup. Concerta, and we tried Depakote, and we tried Ritalin. And then he was on um, Stratera for a year. That's anti, that's to help the, the uh, ADHD. That really did help calm him down, but at the same time, it apparently exacerbated the, the bipolar. Zyprexa. The mood stabilizer. This is big. Yeah. It's a thousand milligrams. Raul was adopted when he was 18 months old. He was difficult and displayed behavioral problems from the beginning, taking psychotropic medications from the age of three. I go off the deep end, really deep end. I ended up in um, four winds, which is a hospital where um, kids get act up you know, really badly. And I went there, I was there for like, just a month. So I was acting up at the house, hitting my mom. This is, this is really wrong, but I learned my lesson, I'm not gonna go back there. Trying my best not to go back. It's like a hotel. They're just no, really it's not desperate. A hotel. They're just trying to be desperate to be calm and stuff. Yeah. Well, no, he he took Struck a lamp. He took a lamp and started pushing it around, and he broke the screen and he broke a window and he broke his closet door. 
And then he went outside and started trying to break more things, but by that time, actually we called the police no. at that time. And so the police came. After experiencing a seizure, Raoul was hospitalized in the psychiatric ward, where he remained for a month. I wasn't home, I was at work. Yeah. And I got the call, and uh, when I did, of course I rushed over here. I'm very upset, uh, you know, to see the whole, the whole scene. And it was, it was sad, too, because in a way, you know, we'd helped him up to this point, you know, with, with the therapeutic intervention and all that, and we thought perhaps maybe we were turning a corner, but actually we were really downhill. Without any definitive studies, it's impossible to conclude anything concrete about the long-term consequences of these medications. The short-term success counts, and when it comes to dramatic scenes like Raoul's, it's often unclear to what degree the illness or medication is responsible. It takes more studies and more resources to bring a drug straight to market for bipolar disorder. So they're called atypical antipsychotics because they were first used for treating psychotic patients. They're atypical in that they didn't have a lot of the side effects that the other, the older antipsychotics had. So atypical in the fact that they didn't have as many movement disorders uh, associated with them as the older types. So uh, they are in advance, and those tend to work pretty well in children. Das ist falsch. Uh, sie sind nicht uh, unbedingt besser, sondern sie sind anders. Sie wirken anders als die älteren Substanzen. Sie haben uh, andere Nebenwirkungen, nicht einfach weniger Nebenwirkungen. Und zu diesen Nebenwirkungen gehört im Gegensatz zu den älteren Substanzen dass sie, wie wir sagen, exzitatorisch wirksam sind. Sie äh, sind erregend. Das merken Patienten daran, dass sie schlechter schlafen können, dass man dann Tranquilizer, also beruhigende Mittel, dazugeben muss in den ersten Tagen der Behandlung, dass sie motorisch unruhig werden, dass sie innerlich äh, agitiert sind, ängstlich. Und was sicher nicht häufig vorkommt, aber was immer wieder beobachtet worden ist, sie können bei Menschen, die so etwas bislang noch nie erlebt haben, äh, Suizidgedanken äh, auslösen. Raoul attends a special school for children with psychological problems. His friend Ryan is in the same class. Ryan, 11. Diagnosis bipolar disorder. Just like Raoul, Ryan was adopted by his parents as a baby and also displayed behavioral problems from a very early age. I think a, a month into the Depakote or so, he was almost kind of bordering on, um, uh, how can I explain, more manic behavior, and the agitation got even worse. So um, they added an atypical antipsychotic at that point. And he did seem calmer with that, he did. Um, that was after the first hospitalization. But over the next six months, we realized that it still wasn't right. He was still very, very unstable. Things got worse, and six months later, he ended up uh, actually threatening to, to commit suicide. A few years ago, the neurobiologist Gerald Hooter highlighted the possible danger of developing Parkinson's disease through long-term use of methylphenidate. Sehr früh verabreichte Medikamente, die die Arbeitsweise des Hirns verändern, führen dazu, dass auch die Reifung des Hirns sich verändert. Man kann das vielleicht mit einem Bild vergleichen, wenn man dieselben Psychopharmaka einem Erwachsenen gibt dann ist das gewissermaßen so, dass die einem schlingernden Zug wieder auf das Gleis verhelfen. Aber die Gleise sind ja alle schon da. Wenn man diese Medikamente einem Kind gibt, dessen Hirn sich noch in der Entwicklung befindet, dann ist das so, als ob man den Gleisbau beeinflusst. Das heißt, dann fährt der Zug auch woanders hin. Und das ist dann eben auch nachweisbar. In the PDR, which is PDR, uh, the uh, Pharmaceutical Reference Guide, uh, there's a little fact that says side effects of antidepressants or some of these uh, psychostimulants for children 
in 0.0006%, which is like six one thousandth of a percent, six one thousand percent, children might be violent or homicidal. So wait a minute, we have about six million children on psychotropic drugs, or maybe more. On Ritalin alone, we have six million, okay? So now take the numbers. What's six one hundredth or six one thousandth of one percent of a six or 10 or 20 million? On April the 20th, 1999, students Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold killed 12 other pupils in the Columbine school massacre. In the wake of the tragedy, there was considerable discussion of the unpredictable side effects of modern psychotropic medication. The former chairman of the German Pharmaceutical Commission has spoken about the long-term effects of these medications. I believe that there is a connection ähm, nicht nur zwischen den SSRIs, sondern möglicherweise auch den Stimulantien, ähm, die und unter Umständen auch ähm, Beruhigungsmitteln, so merkwürdig das klingt, auch die können paradoxe, enthemmende Wirkungen haben, so wie auch der Alkohol. Und wenn dann noch Alkohol dazu kommt, auch im Sinne einer Enthemmung, dann kann man sich sehr vorste gut vorstellen, dass aus dieser Kombination dann ein fremdaggressives Verhalten ähm, entsteht. Kyle, 3, Diagnosis ADHD and suspected bipolar disorder. Here. You say you want a tattoo. Uh, yep, I want the spider one. Three-year-old Kyle is currently one of the youngest patients at the General Hospital. He, too, is suspected of having bipolar disorder. What's certain is that he suffers from ADHD. For a few months, Kyle's been taking Tenex, a psychotropic drug that deals with both illnesses. Wow! Wow. Like it, mommy. Kyle was actually um, very mellow um, when he was her age. He was a very, you know, very good baby, very mellow, very calm, very easygoing. Um, it wasn't until he was probably about two and a half that we started, started seeing some um, differences in his behavior between him and his peers. Um, it was his daycare provider that had said to me that she thought that he was a little more aggressive, a little more angry than the average two and a half year old. Kyle's mother is single and employed. When she changed her last job, she lost her medical insurance. In her search for free therapy for her son, she came across Dr. Doyle, who's been treating Kyle for the past six months. No, we're not taking any out. <laughs> it sounds like it's starting to do what we wanted it to do. <laughs> he could be bipolar, but yeah. more uh, yeah. closely online would be that he has ADHD. <laughs> and we started this medication because he's so young now, it's hard to tell what, you know, this acting out is. Is it really ADHD or is it bipolar? He had quite a few tantrums, but he didn't show a lot of hypersexual behaviors. Uh, he did take a lot of risk-taking behaviors. And right now, there's a couple of overlap symptoms that whether we count them for bipolar or count them for ADHD, it's hard to tell. Das kann nicht sein. Ja? Ich denke auch, das darf eigentlich nicht sein. Das heißt nicht, dass ich denke, ein Zweijähriger muss unbedingt unauffällig sein und alle Kinder sind gesund und so. Ich denke, auch ein Zweijähriger kann durchaus ähm, ja, in unserem Sinne auffällig sein, psychiatrisch auffällig sein. Aber ich halte es für, äh, zumindest für uns, für vollkommen undenkbar, dass wir diese Kinder so medikamentös behandeln. Genau, klasse. In Europe, there's generally more reliance on alternative therapies in the treatment of psychologically problematic children. Mark andre has been doing occupational therapy now for two years. This treatment involves a therapist concentrating intensely on the individual weaknesses of the child. Es ist natürlich zum einen diese Konzentration auf eine Sache, wobei man das beübt und er mag den Plättchenbaum zum Beispiel sehr gerne. Das heißt, da fällt es ihm leichter sich darauf zu konzentrieren. Ähm, es ist auch eine feinmotorische Übung, eine Übung der Geschicklichkeit, also was man vorhin auch mit der Schere gesehen hat, mit dem Schneiden, 
weil ähm, Marc André häufig auch viel zu schnell ist in dem, was er tut, schnell fertig werden und zum nächsten gehen. Ja, und das wird damit im Prinzip beübt, dass er ausdauernd bei der Sache bleibt. Weil als er zum Beispiel hier angefangen hat, da konnte er keine fünf Minuten am Tisch sitzen. Before treatment, Marc André was unable to perform simple physical tasks, such as catching a ball or hopping on one foot. But in spite of the focus on alternative therapies, the tendency to reach out for pills is increasing in Europe too. Wenn ich Kinder- und Jugendpsychiater wäre oder, oder niedergelassener Arzt, würde mich das auch freuen, wenn ich da einfach so eine schwierige Symptomatik mit einer Pille und dann innerhalb von einer halben Stunde funktioniert das Kind wieder. Ich kann ich auch verstehen, dass die das gerne haben und auch gerne einsetzen. Ja, und dann hat man natürlich, äh, hat man natürlich auch noch eine, diejenigen, die an diesen Pillen Geld verdienen. In the USA, psychiatrists receive some of the highest bonuses from the pharmaceutical industry. Critics of medication treatment see the increase in diagnoses of mental illness as a direct result of this close cooperation between pharmaceutical companies and hospitals. The purpose of the diagnosis, I believe, is to justify using multiple medications and, and, and selling more medication. And, it's, uh, and, and so what's happened is the top levels of psychiatry in uh, the United States have been influenced uh, to uh, uh, adjust the label and start diagnosing children bipolar. Uh, as soon as they show a little rambunctiousness or bad behavior disorders, or they look a little depressed, they give the diagnosis bipolar. John Abramson is a former psychologist and author of the successful book Overdosed America. There's definitely a relationship to the funding system of how the knowledge is produced and disseminate, disseminated that creates the impression that physicians who are trying their best to help children will realize that goal by using drugs and expensive drugs instead of by doing what they did before these expensive drugs became the recognized therapy for pediatric bipolar disease. In the summer of 2008, the medical team in Boston made headlines for not disclosing the millions of dollars that they'd received from the pharmaceutical industry. The suspicion was that the collaboration between the pharmaceutical industry and the hospital was closer than anyone wanted to admit. Es ist ja als Skandal auch ähm, in der Presse in Amerika gebrandmarkt worden und das ist natürlich ein Skandal. Nur man soll nicht glauben, das sei einzigartig. Das gibt es in vielleicht etwas kleineren Dimensionen ähm, überall in der Welt und auch bei uns in, in Deutschland. So the wonderful thing about bipolar, since it's manic depressive, it has manic aspects uh, and depressive aspects, is you can prescribe several drugs, lithium, uh, a, a, a antipsychotic, a, a antidepressant, an SSRI. Uh, you can pres and so there's a lot more money. And if you can get children on four or five drugs, starting at the age of six to 10 to 12 to 15, you can have a patient for 30 or 40 or 50 years only 30 or 40 because the, the, the information shows that people who are on psychotropic drugs uh, for a long term have a lifespan which is 25% on average less than a normal person who's not on drugs. Hey! You are! You are taking everything! I don't like that! Who are you yelling at? I feel my neck. I don't wear at that meal. How come? No kitchen. No kitchen. Hey, why are you throwing everything? You want to get the drink? Kyle! 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 Calm down. Like your bike? Don't throw that, please. Don't throw that, please. Kyle! Look at me. Look at where are my eyes. Where are my eyes? Where are my eyes? That was probably one of the main reasons that Dr. Doyle thought that there was a possibility it might be bipolar. He had actually had an episode in his office where um, he, you know, he was very f 
physical and attacking me and choking me and pulling my hair and clawing my face. And um, Dr. Doyle had never seen that before, you know, never seen that side of him. I see it all the time. It happens all the time at home whenever I tell him no or I don't, you know, get along with him. He, um, you know, behaves in that way. But so Dr. Doyle said that could definitely be a possibility, you know, the reason that he thinks he's bipolar. How long do you know? Dog. Yeah. Watch out for your sister. Yeah. Whoa. Eine Gesellschaft, die sich das nicht leisten kann, Mittel in die Zukunft ihrer Kinder zu investieren und sie stattdessen diese Kinder gewissermaßen notdürftig mit Medikamenten heranzieht, das ist eine Gesellschaft, die eine sehr fragwürdige Zukunft hat. Lasst die mal bitte auf den Tisch liegen. <lacht> Ich hab die größte. So besser? Ja, so ist. Ja, Mama! Ja. Deine Mama! Ja, du wolltest Salat haben. Und hör auf mit dem Theater. Jetzt reicht's. Mal langsam, mach doch die Löffel nicht so voll. Umso länger hast du was von. Stopp. Nicht so. Mama, ist lang Mama! Ist langsam, es nimmt dir keiner weg. Yeah. Mark Andre will soon be six years old and he's going to begin school. His parents are concerned because he still lacks concentration despite the many alternative therapy treatments. Their minds are made up. He'll start taking methylphenidate in a matter of months. Man hört natürlich immer, was die Medikamente für Risiken für Nebenwirkungen haben. Andererseits ist die sind die Risiken ohne die Medikamente, die für das Kind natürlich dann dementsprechend größer. Also Suchtgefahr und so weiter sind halt ohne Medikamente größer. Und äh, ich möchte für mein Kind das Beste für die Schule, dass er in der Schule gleich von Anfang an gut mitkommt, dass er seine ähm, sozialen Kontakte auch vernünftig pflegen kann und dass er da auch richtig reinwächst. Und das geht bei ihm, so wie es aussieht, nur mit Medikamenten. <lacht> Treatment of children with psychotropic drugs is a science that is still partly experimental. Only the future will tell if the parents of these children have made the right decisions. And by then, it will be too late to go back. <laughs>